Hi everybody, you are watching Vitorials. My name is Alex and today we're gonna create this custom watermark in Adobe Illustrator using Shape Builder tool and simple shapes. So let's start with a new document, Ctrl N or Command N on your Mac. I'm gonna size this document with 1280 to 1024 pixels, click create. And first of all, I'm gonna show the grid. So Ctrl Quad or Command Quad on your Mac and Ctrl Shift Quad or Command Shift Quad to snap to the grid. You can also find these options here. View, show height grid and snap to the grid. So uh, let's grab an ellipse or click L and draw an ellipse that occupies four large squares or has a diameter of 320 pixels. Now disable the fill, leaving only a stroke and create a duplicate, Ctrl C Ctrl F to make a duplicate. Now I have two ellipses and resize this duplicate on one small cell from each side. So it has now a diameter of 280 pixels. Then do the same operation over and over again until we have six copies. Uh, the last duplicate should be 120 pixels. Now select them all and holding Alt key, holding Shift key. Drag this to the side to make a duplicate. With this duplicate selected, grab the length segment tool and bisect. Draw a horizontal line that bisects this group of circles. Keep this line selected, go to the object, path and divide objects below. So we have now two groups of semicircles and we need to Delete top one, click delete. Now I'm gonna to go to the properties and increase the stroke a bit. So I can easily drag this group here. Next step is to select this group of circles. And again, I'm gonna increase the stroke and holding Alt key, create a duplicate place it here. Now select it again and place another duplicate here. So the outer circles from one group tangent with the inner circles of another group. And now I'm gonna move this duplicate as well. And last one we need to allocate the group of our semicircle. So we have this kind of uh, beginning of our loop wordmark. I'm gonna select all of this composition and uh, push it a bit to the center. Uh, now let's show the guides, Ctrl R, Command R, and place the guides at the top and at the bottom of our circles, like so. Grab the line segment tool or click slash. And with the line segment tool, with the shift key selected. Draw a line with the width of entire artboard sitting on the neighbor grid line. So we have uh, our guide sitting on the this grid line and we need to place our line on the neighboring grid line. I'm gonna increase the stroke so you can see where is my ascender line and I'm gonna duplicate holding Alt and Shift and place the, the descender line. Now grab the line segment tool again and draw vertical line starting from the ascender line and reaching our reaching our semicircles. Uh, our line should have at least 320 pixels of height. Let me uh, show you. I think I need to go a little bit further with this line. Now make a duplicate holding Alt and dragging, holding Alt and Shift and dragging on one cell and then with Ctrl D command D repeat this operation over and over again and it's gonna be the stem of our letter L. Now do the same with the our with the descender of our letter P, starting from 
here from the beginning of our letter P and then reaching our descender line, make it duplicate, holding Alt key and then with Ctrl T, Command T, much better. Now we can check if everything is alright. We can Ctrl A, Command A, select everything, then holding Shift key, draw an area to deselect your guides, and then grab the Shape Builder tool, or we'll click Shift M, and try whether you do everything right or not. If you do everything right, you are able to connect two, two neighboring segments into one. If you fail to connect them as I do uh, here, uh, you need to reposition your lines. And let's try it again. Now I have it right, so I need to push them a bit to the left because they do not reach the descender line. So, now we have everything selected. I do not want to deselect the guides. With my shape builder tool, I'm gonna select first of all, define the first L, starting from the leftmost segment, then going to the inner segment of my letter O. Then going to the outer segment of my letter, second letter row, and then uh, going to the inner segment of my letter P. I'm gonna combine all the lines of the letter L, O, and uh, until the letter P, I'm gonna leave my uh, letter P uh, intact. Then I'm gonna start here and define this segment and then go in here. Now I'm gonna select everything inside my letter P. Great. And define the letter P ascender and make also the rest of my letter O looking very well. I'm gonna now delete all the unnecessary shapes that we have here. We have a bunch of them. Delete the descender line. So we have our uh, primary composition. We can also get rid from the guidelines. And first of all, I'm gonna navigate to the stroke panel. You can find it here in the previous version and select this option align stroke to center then i'm gonna navigate to the stroke value of weight and define this weight around eight uh, points so we have our composition and now we need to grab our scissors tool navigate to the top of the stem of the letter L and slice a roof of our letter L. Very nice. Uh, with the direct selection tool, I'm gonna delete it. Now I'm gonna navigate here and again slice some parts, bottom parts of my letter P. Grab direct selection tool and delete them as well. We need to change the projecting cap in order to do that. Go to the stroke again and set the cap to the round round caps. Now select everything in this composition, and with Control Eight Command Eight, we need to convert it to the compound path. So it's now a compound path. See here, you can also go to the object, compound path, make. Navigate to the top, our watermark. And uh, let's disable actually Control shift code Command shift code to disable the snapping to the grid. And I'm gonna create a small circles. 
a couple of them and arrange them on the top of the stem, like so. Do the same here in the bottom of our descender. This. Okay, here and here. Looks very well. It's some additional design elements that helps us, uh, us to denote some motion. Okay. And last but not least, let's apply the gradient. So go to the gradient panel. If you can find yours, uh, go to the Windows gradient or Ctrl F9, Command F9 on your Mac. Apply the default gradient, but not to the fill, to the stroke. I'm gonna apply the default gradient. Then I'm gonna select the double click on the color stop, select the same icon, navigate to the uh, blue values, and apply the blue here. Then go again to CMI Kai and apply the purple here. Looks very nice, very well. Last but not least, let's select our three dots and change it to blue as well and purple these dots. So guys, this is basically the end of this tutorial. If you enjoyed, give a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, go to vitorials.net for more Adobe Illustrator and write the tutorials. Thank you for watching, have a nice day!